What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Compulsive Podcast. I'm your host, Peter Widom. You can find myself and this podcast at compulsive.com. All right, folks, this week we got the beta fours of, well, just about everything in Apple world. So let's run this through them very quickly. We got iOS 18 beta 4, iPad OS 18 beta 4, Mac OS 15 beta 4, TV OS beta 4, Vision OS 2 beta 4, Watch OS beta 4, and there you go. We also got release candidates for the current major versions of the operating systems. I won't go through those. You know what they are. At least I hope so. Also on the application side, Let's take a look here. We also got a new Xcode 16 Beta 4, which has been doing pretty good for me this week, I gotta say. So now that we're getting deep into the betas here and maybe even approaching release candidates within a month or so, maybe, right? The fall's gonna get here pretty darn quickly for 2024. Let's talk about how safe it is to consider installing these versions on devices that you use regularly, right? Now, As always, these are pre-release versions, folks. Don't put them on your production stuff, right? If you are like me and you rely on your iPad, your Mac, your iPhone every day for what you do for a living, please take my advice. Do not install these beta versions. They will have problems potentially at some point and you're going to have to recover from those, hopefully. So do not install these beta versions. That's just my suggestion. That's what I do. Hey, if you choose to install them, you know what you're getting into. Hey folks, if you like what you're hearing in this podcast and you want to help this podcast to continue going forward and having great guests and great conversations, I invite you to become a Patreon supporter. You can go to patreon.com forward slash compile swift where you will get ad free versions of the podcast along with other content. Now, if you do choose to install them, what have you got to look forward to here? Of course, the huge plus is you get to see all the new features and try them all out before they arrive in the final version in the fall, for the most part. A lot of the AI services are not ready yet, or they're not quite working as you would expect at a production level, right? Same goes for Xcode. There's still some things missing from the AI services in Xcode, so... We haven't got everything yet, but that said, we do now have the iPhone mirroring onto your Mac, which for me, that's the big feature this year. That's what I'm super excited about. And as hard as it is, I'm resisting the urge to install iOS beta so that I can try it out. I'm, I still just have iOS 17 production on my machine and on my phone, and that's the way it's going to stay until we get to a really good point or even just after we get to the release point I may wait a little while see what kind of problems folks have now why am I saying this as a developer if you need to rely on your equipment don't go putting pre-release software on there that applies to anything right apple or other just don't do it you're you're asking for trouble at some point because it's not uncommon that it's happened before that in the very late beta releases or even the release candidates, something goes wrong in a big way that's been completely reliable up until now and screws it up for everybody. It happens. It's happened before. It'll happen again. It's just the way it is. Again, this is all pre-release stuff, folks, right? Now, that said, if you have other devices or devices specifically targeted as test devices, yes, this is a good time to go ahead and put those betas on there. So why am I saying that? If you've got apps in the app stores or you've got apps just in general that people are paying for, you owe it to them to check them ahead of the release of the new final operating systems later in the year to make sure your apps, number one, operate as you expect, number two, operate as your users expect, number three, the data, data integrity is good, there's no problems there, those kind of things. And then number four, just to make sure stability is good, right? You owe that to your users. Simple as that, in in my opinion. If I had the ability and the money to have a test device, that's what I'd be doing right now. Unfortunately, I don't on my personal apps. So I'm 
you know, gonna have to wait. It's as simple as that. Now, the other advantage here, like I say, you get to see the features early and a lot of content makers will be preparing new articles and, and all reviews and all these kind of things with all the latest changes of the betas. So you get to stay ahead of the curve there as well. So there really is an upside and a downside to doing this and you've got to figure out what's best for you. Again, my recommendation is if you rely on something every day to do your work, whatever that may mean for you, don't risk it. Now, there is one exception, and I'm going to go into that in detail here. For Mac OS, you can have multiple installs. So you are lucky here. You have the opportunity to mess around with the beta version of Sequoia without risking unless you do something wrong, and I'm going to walk you through my entire process for doing this in a second here, you can have the benefit of trying out the new operating system along with the current version with some interesting little details that, again, I'll point out along the way. So how does this work? Well, if you've got an M Mac, this is going to be a lot easier for you, and I think that's probably most of the audience right now, maybe even all of them at this point. So how does this work? Well, you may recall the file system APFS. That's what makes the magic here, along with containers. What you can do, if you've got a big enough drive with enough space, you can create a new APFS-based container and use the recovery system on your Mac to install the operating system into that container. And then you can dual boot between the two. Now. I'm going to stress, be very careful here. You can just as easily screw everything up. So tread very carefully. I have messed this up in the past, but I've got a system that works for me. And in the show notes, I'm going to give you links to the hardware on Amazon. Yeah, it's an affiliate link, but this is the hardware that I use to make this work for me reliably. So how does this work? Well, first of all, what I'm going to recommend is the path that I do, which is to create another container and then install macOS Sonoma, in this case, the current release version of the operating system. And then I would install Sequoia Beta 4 over the top. So what you're going to do is on a Mac, you're going to open up the disk utility. Make sure you've got enough space. That's number one here. And... Just create a new APFS-based container. If you do not know how to do that, there is a lot of documents and walkthrough videos on the internet that'll show you how to do that. It's very straightforward. It's just like formatting a disk, but you're actually just creating a new partition, essentially, on the disk. Again, you're going to want to make sure you've got space here. I've got an M1 Max 14-inch MacBook Pro with a one terabyte drive. Now you can install it internally in the other container. That's perfectly fine. And then you'll dual boot between the two of them. However, the system that I'm using actually allows me to use an external drive. So the setup that I have is my internal drive is a one terabyte and I've got Mac OS Sonoma on there. That's my main daily driver machine every day. And then I'm using a Thunderbolt 4 NVMe drive in an external container. And I have installed macOS Sonoma on there and then Sequoia over the top. The gotcha that you've got to watch out for is it will not work with USB-C based drives. I have tried so many different ways to make it work and I just can't do it. It won't see the drive to boot. And because it won't see the drive at boot time, you can install the operating system on it. You can clone a drive over to it, but it won't boot. So make sure you're using Thunderbolt 4 drive, external drive plugged into the, the Thunderbolt port, and that's gonna work beautifully for you. Again, I'll put links in the show notes to the external drive that I'm using and the external drive box which has a fan in it keeps everything nice and cool i've got it plugged into a thunderbolt 4 hub here but you can just as easily plug it into your macbook pro and of course it's thunderbolt 4 it is every bit as fast 
as your internal drive as far as I can tell. So there's no weird lag or anything like that. And the beauty of this is, if everything goes wrong, okay, it's all going to go wrong on that external drive, right? That's the plan here. Time for a break. Hey, everybody, it's Peter Whittam here from the Compulsory Podcast. I want to tell you about Setup. Setup is a service that provides a subscription fee of just $10 a month, and you get access to over 200 Mac applications, and it's also available now on iOS as part of that deal. I use the service because it just has a ton of really good first-rate apps that I use all the time. And for me, it's invaluable as a developer to have access to tools for things like APIs, for planning projects, uh, writing emails, writing documentation. And you get all of these things, including database apps, all of that kind of stuff, right there on the set app service for just $10 a month. You can use as many or as few applications as you need. If you're interested in checking this out, go to peterwidham.com, P-E-T-E-R-W-I-T-H-A-M dot com forward slash set app, S-E-T-A-P-P. And you can see the details there. And it's got a link that you can go over and start using the service and see how it works out for you. I strongly recommend this to every Mac user. Break time over. So how does this work? Okay, so... You turn off your Mac, and then you turn the power on. Keep the power button pushed down, and you'll see on the screen it'll say, keep the button pushed down, and then eventually it'll say, okay, going into essentially the boot recovery options. Then it's going to try and find all the drives. If your container on your internal drive or your external drive already has something on there to boot from, it'll probably show up on the list. Of course, you will see your Macintosh HD. You can just select your Macintosh HD at this point. It's going to boot into the recovery tools. Now, in the recovery tools, what's going to happen is you've got the option in there to use a disk, the disk utility program that's in the Mac to create that container that I was talking about. However, what I recommend, again, with my setup, is use the external drive, right? So you're going to target that external drive and format that drive for APFS and let it do its thing. I've got a two terabyte NVMe. I think it was about $149 on Amazon, link in the show notes. And this is great. This is more than enough space. It's double the space of my internal drive. So you format that drive or that container. And then what you're gonna do is now go into and say, I want to recover. So you're going to recover your Mac OS installation. Now, don't be too concerned because you may be thinking, I think it's doing something to my internal drive. Probably not is the answer. It might look like it. Now, eventually, once the recovery has started up and it's going to say, okay, where do you want to install this recovery OS version? This is the crucial point, right? This is where you can mess it up make sure you either select that container you have made on your internal drive or you select the external drive. Make sure you get it right. Do not select your Macintosh HD. And then click next. You're going to let it go through its thing. If you've ever done this, you'll see it's going to take a while, 30 minutes to an hour, maybe. And then it's going to do all of that. And then it's going to reboot a couple of times. Sometimes my machine has booted back to the Macintosh HD. If that happens for you, all you gotta do is, again, turn off the Mac, hold down the power button until you get back to those recovery options. And then eventually there's a, you know, it'll show you the drives and you can select the one that you wanna work with. Now, at this point, if everything goes according to plan, your machine's gonna reboot. You're gonna have a new, fresh install of Mac OS Sonoma, uh, as of recording this podcast, on your external drive. Great. Go through, it's boot that drive. It, it's going to ask you, it may ask you to authenticate with an account already on your machine. That's fine. Go ahead and do that or create a new account as if you were setting up a new machine. It's hard to say which option you, you're going to get because I've seen several in the past, but this, again, if you're doing this, should be something you're familiar with. So at that point, your machine will boot up 
with the external drive. Fantastic. If you want to keep going, you can just use macOS Sonoma and set it up. And now you've got a backup emergency disk you can boot from on your external drive. And great. However, purpose of what we're doing here, we're going to in install Sequoia Beta. So now you're going to go up into your system settings. You're going to already be logged in with iCloud because you'll have to do that to get into the Mac. You will register your Mac if you haven't already to, for the beta program. You're just going to go into software updates and you'll see a drop down there. Currently, you can select the developer beta 4, developer beta, or the, the public release beta. Whichever one you want to go with. I've gone with beta 4. That would be my recommendation at this point for us as developers. It's going to go through and do what it needs to. It's going to do the download, the verification, and then it's going to say, hey, I need to reset your Mac to install this. Great. Let it do its thing. Again, you may be under the impression that it's doing it on your internal drive. It's not. It's doing it the one from the one you booted from. So if you booted from the external, it's going to upgrade that to Sequoia. If you booted from the internal drive to the new container, I know it's very confusing, right? It's going to, it's going to do that. It's going to do the upgrade for Sequoia again, maybe 30 minutes to an hour, depending on your machine. It's going to do all that stuff. Then it's going to reboot. And when it reboots, hopefully it's going to reboot into the same drive. If not, Use the recovery options like we spoke about. And at that point, folks, you're now looking at the beta, right? You're now, you should now be booted into Mac OS uh, Sequoia beta and you're ready to rock and roll and install your tools and have fun with it. As a developer, please be aware you cannot use Xcode 15 with Mac OS Sequoia betas. You will need to download Xcode 16. Now, the advantage there, of course, is that if you do that, you're going to get to play with some of the predictive assist in Xcode 16, but you will need to install, install the Xcode 16 beta. I recommend downloading it from the developer portal and doing it that way. But at that point, you're good to go. You're going to want to set the machine up like you normally would, but you're now up and running. Use the beta. Take your time and do it very slowly. Do, like I say, you, you can mess everything up, but if you take it slowly and you do it right, you will safely have your existing install of the current Sonoma plus the Sequoia beta that you can switch between by changing the startup disk in your macOS settings. You can literally just open the macOS settings in the search box, put startup. You're going to see it say startup disk, click on that, and it's going to show you all the possible bootable partitions and drives on your system or connected to your system. And you can just switch between them there once you authenticate and unlock the disk and then reboot the machine and you're good to go. That was a lot to get through, I know. But this is a good way to do this, I think, and a safe way as long as you watch what you're doing. But as a developer, hopefully you have enough smarts to, to figure out if something goes wrong, how to get it back. Worst case, you will wipe everything on your machine. Be very careful. I completely recommend, obviously, making a backup before you do this. I use Carbon Copy Cloner and Time Machine. Not that I trust Time Machine, but I, that's what I do. I got both of those. So that's what I got for you in this episode, folks. I know that was a lot of details. Play it back a few times if you need to. But if you want to safely play around with the macOS beta, this is a good way to do it. And of course, with the others, like I say, don't put them on a production device is, is my recommendation. If this has been helpful, you know what to do. Leave a review, tell a friend, put a rating in. If you want to go the extra mile and help support make content like this, and for example, I would love to make a video version of everything I just said about the Mac OS beta install, but it takes time. And that's time that I need to be earning pennies. If you want to go the extra mile, please go to patreon.com forward slash compile swift and you can support the podcast and all the content that I make and all future content there. 
It's not expensive. You get the ad-free versions of the podcast and the satisfaction of knowing that I get to continue making all of this stuff for you, which I love doing, by the way. Hope this has been helpful. Let me know in the comments. Let me know in the reviews, everything else. Reach out to me, Compile Swift, on all the networks. Watch the live streams, right? Twitch.tv forward slash compile dev. Make sure you go to compile dev. And that's it, folks. I'll speak to you in the next one.